everyone and welcome back to the series of Inspired by Motherhood. Today, I have invited a host, a TV presenter to join me. She has also married uh, a musician, one of the band members from the San Willows. When I see them on media presence, they look like one of the coolest couples in Singapore. <laughs> so let's give a warm welcome to Amanda Chen. Thank you, Hello, Yen, Amanda. for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for joining us Thank and you taking so the time much. too. Um, so yes, I am a host, a TV presenter, and sometimes I act as well. But I am currently six months pregnant, as you can see, and I am very, very excited to embark on this journey and share it with Yen. Yeah, okay. So um, before we begin our conversation and chats, usually we will have uh, five words to describe one another, to have a glimpse of our personality, right? Ooh, yeah. Would you like to start first, Amanda? Okay, okay. So I just got to know Yen very, very recently. So this is my one of my first impressions of you, okay? Mm. You are very discerning. Mm. You are very curious, at the same time knowledgeable. Um, you are generous with your knowledge, something that I really, really appreciate about you. And you were also very, very sweet. Oh, I mean, thank when you. When I first met you, you were just so lovely <laughs> to talk to. Yeah, I'm curious to understand why you say that I'm curious. Is it because of the many questions that I asked about yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, which is very nice, you know, because I don't know, I feel like most of the time, people that I meet now, they just like to talk about themselves. You know what I mean? So it's nice to meet someone that you can kind of have a conversation with and go back and forth. Yeah. yeah, I think it's also because I enjoy our conversation. When we first met at Katong, um, Madam Pata and Katong, you have a very bubbly personality that attracts me to you. So I just want to have more chats with her and find out more how you're doing. So bubbly is definitely one of the attractive personality that attracts me to have a deeper conversation with. With that conversation that we had in Katong, I asked her if she will be delighted to join me in this series. And she also spontaneous to say yes, although we have first met then. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much for making the time too. Um, and while I was researching through the internet to find out more about you, I read that you are a very big hearted person. Thank you. So she has rescued <laughs> dogs. And the, the two pets that you have is actually from adopted from a rescue place. Mm -hmm. um, one of them, but yeah, well, she, she is a rescue. One of them is a rescue. Yeah, and then yeah. Um, Kaya, your, yes. Yes, ca yeah. your cat. Yeah, yeah, actually, I pick up a lot of animals from the street. That happens quite a lot. So yeah. that's so big hearted of, of you. Thank you. And um, stylish, as you can see. <laughs> she styled herself really well. <laughs> I often see her in eight days being titled as the best dress of the week, today online, and even appearing for big brands like Goche, Fendi. Wow. Thank you. Wow. You really did your homework. <laughs> yeah, I must. And very beautiful, Amanda. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, and that Thank brings you. me to creating this dish of bird's nest for you. Mm. Bird's nest is a beauty food, so I have double boiled it inside this snow pear from Korea. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So let's try it. Okay. okay. So this is a very nourishing kind of dessert mm -hmm. that pregnant mothers or wow. even ladies can enjoy. Oh my goodness, it looks so delicious. Thank <laughs> you, yes. So snow pear itself is very nourishing, which helps to nourish the lungs. Mm. As the Chinese saying goes, fei zu pi. So the, the good lungs will actually boost good immunity, uh, reduces cough, and also good skin. Mm -hmm. And when you are pregnant now, with these red dates, it actually nourish the blood and improve the energy and tea flow. Mm. Mm. So with this, I hope that you'll be able to have a robust, energetic body and yeah when you eat bird's nest in general it's usually like full of happiness you know it's nourishing your body mm -hmm. yeah. so what else is in it the, there's also the goji berry mm, okay. mm. so is this how you usually prepare your your um, bird's nest mm. yeah um not to the extent of 
using the pear oh, and okay, all. Okay. Yeah, so this is great presentation. If the simpler way is to slice it up and boil it in the pot together. Mm. I've also cooked snow pear with um, solo monsil rhizome, yu zhu, yeah, barley, lily mm. bubs. That's also another nourishing formula. Okay, okay. So how often do you consume bird's nest? While you're pregnant, you can take up to daily mm. or even two or three times a week. It's very good protein. Maybe I come to your house every day. <laughs> <laughs> From the recent Instagram post that I see, you had a gender review party and it was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only you having fun, it's like her family and friends are participating in games. And congratulations to a baby boy. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Was it part of the family planning that you want to have kids after married for five years? Um, no, not really. It really came as a surprise. Uh, so John and I were, oh, especially me actually, I've always been on the fence about having children. Mm. More towards no, to be honest. Um, so no, this was definitely not part of the plan. Yeah. Mm. So how, what, what were you feeling? How were you feeling when you, I mean, you got to know when you did the pregnancy test, you missed your menstruation? Yeah, um, I was very surprised. I was uh, shocked for a, a while. Um, I was like, no way. Confused. Yeah, I was confused. And then I was like, no way, you know, and I did the test like twice three times just to make sure and I know yeah I that is pregnant. really positive yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes when that happens it's unplanned mothers can get confused or feel that there's not things are not in control yes yes definitely but and because you know I had so many plans ahead nothing concrete but it was things like you know I just still wanted to travel because it was fresh out of COVID, you know, at that time. Mm. I mean, we are still fresh out of COVID actually. But I had so many plans. I wanted to go I diving. Mm. I wanted to travel to places that I wouldn't normally travel with a child, you know. Um, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> so then what happened next when you realized that you are pregnant, it was positive and you are unsure of? Um, we were weighing our options, to mm. be honest. We were deciding if we wanted to keep the baby or not um, and that was something that obviously i don't take lightly right mm. um, but also at the same time i did not want to have a child out of obligation and because i already am pregnant i yep. always knew that if i ever wanted to become mm. a parent it had to be something that was very intentional for me um, i I wouldn't say I wanted to make sure I'm ready, but I needed to be in the right headspace, mm. you know, have the right mm. mindset. That's important. Yeah, have the right values mm. um, because you're basically raising another human being, you know, you are responsible for another mm. human being and that was, is not something that I take lightly. Mm. Um, so I went back and forth for a while. Uh, I even made appointments to go to the clinic, you know, to actually get the procedure done. Mm. Um, and uh, I fasted for 12 hours. You're supposed to fast, right? And then when I went to the clinic, I couldn't go through with it. But because we found out really, really early on, um, you know, we had time to decide. So I made like two, three appointments and all the times I could not go through with the procedure. So I think that was when it was kind of clear to us that, okay, you know, even though it's not part of our plan, I think that this is something that we would happily um, invite into our family. Mm. It's actually quite common, it's not uncommon for unplanned pregnancy, right? Yes. Yeah, so at a point of time, I'm glad that um, you have talked with John and you all have arrived at consensus that you want to keep this baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how was John reaction response to things then? John, um, as we, you know, as we entered the fourth year of our marriage, third, fourth year of our marriage, he always um, brought up the idea of having a kid, you know, whereas I was, okay, I'm like terribly terrified of having children, especially the physical act of it. Like, I'm horrified. 
Um, so Changing that, diapers, carrying. No, giving birth. Oh. And pushing a child. Ah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Before that, you see lots of shows, yeah. videos. And they really don't do childbirth justice, right? <laughs> so I was so scared. And like, that was one of the biggest reasons why I was like, oh. like I cannot. Like, my brain, I cannot imagine giving birth to a child. Mm. So every time John brought it up, I'd be like, haha, then you can give birth. <laughs> you know? Um, but throughout the whole process, when we actually found out we were pregnant, mm. I, I was pregnant, he was excited. But also, he was very supportive. He was like, you know, at the end of the day, it is my body. And he said that he will respect whatever I wanted. So he would go with me to the clinic and then I would change my mind. Like, we would, you know, he's like, whatever you feel is right for you, just go ahead. That's and then nice. I would change my mind and then he'd be like, okay, we can go home. And then we <laughs> go home. We do it two, three times. And then, yeah, so he's just been really, really great throughout this journey. Very, very supportive. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of mothers or women who are planning for pregnancy will think that once they become a mother, they will lose their freedom or they will be committed and all, but definitely it's not that. And through the science these days, childbirth, the natural act of childbirth delivery itself, is not as horrendous as one envisioned. Okay, so, you know, I don't think the movies and shows help with this whole like idea I have of giving birth, right? Childbirth. Um, that's why I've been actually attending hypnobirthing classes, mm. which is um, a lot of mind work, you know, a lot of positive affirmations. It basically is classes, you attend five classes, two hours each, two and a half hours each, where they kind of reinforce it in you that as women, you know, biologically, we are made to give birth, you know, this is natural for us. Which, yes, I mean, subconsciously, I guess I know that. But I don't know, like, like I said earlier, you know, TV shows, they really, really don't <laughs> help. You know, these women are just in agony. Uh, but hypnobirthing focuses a lot on, like, mindset, like I said, and breathing. Mm. A lot of it is on breathing. So, uh, hypnobirthing classes teach me to focus and visualize on what I actually want during my birth. So, I want a peaceful birth. I want a calm birth. I want... Uh, no perennial tears, things like that. Um, and also your partner is very, very important, your birth partner, uh, which John has been very, very awesome. With. He sits there for me for two and a half hours. Wow. Even though he's a bit ADD. <laughs> yeah, he seemed twitching. <laughs> and I'm like, good job, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that helps. And it also, they also show you um, birthing videos mm. where the mom is I mean I'm sure they're not all like that you know just like how not all births are mom screaming yeah. but not all births are moms very very calm but I mean it gives you that that other glimpse yeah. of you know how it actually can be if you beautiful yeah, sight yeah you know so these women are just there breathing and then the next thing you know their baby is out um. so there, there also is that sight which is very amazing to watch um, it also comes hand in hand with water births, mm. which is something I am going to explore. I'm very, very excited. I'm very um, interested. Wow, at the in, at in home the base or the hospital? In the hospital. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's very so, courageous really? to do that and all. Really? Will you be going through epidural? Any GA? No, I don't think so. From someone <laughs> who is so fearful of birth to like trying out without GA and water yeah. birth. I don't know because oh, I love water. I, yeah. I just love water and I feel like that will help me very, very much just being in water. You know, it's very, very calm. Yeah. It's very comforting to me. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm imagining it and then very zen yeah. and then you are in the space yeah. together with John and the baby. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. But yep. so far that's what I'm visualizing for my birth. So that has helped me very, very much. Instead of because when I was first pregnant, mm. you know, when I first found out when I was pregnant, part of my anxieties at night especially was um, imagining the birth. Like, oh. oh my god, I have to like birth a child down there but then now my image of my birth is it looks different and that's really really nice you know yeah she, she for perspective mindset yeah. how strong this is yeah, wow yeah. amazing yeah. thanks for sharing this to all the mothers out there who also <laughs> have this 
similar experience like you. Yeah. Yeah. So when you talk about first trimester, not being able to sleep at night, having like vivid dreams are actually quite common as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And besides that, um, do you experience any like nauseaness, morning sickness? Oh yeah. During my first trimester, it was horrible. Like, I mean, obviously, I've heard of women going through morning sickness mm. and nausea. It's, I'm one of them. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not during the morning, right? Whole day. Yeah, it's not just during the morning. It's at night. It's in the afternoon. It's whenever. Um, a whole day, like you said, you know, I couldn't eat, and I love to eat. You know, it took away one of my joys in life, mm. and I was like, oh no, like, and very very emotional as well. Uh, part of it, it made me very emotional. You know, cause I couldn't eat, and then I would order food in a restaurant. And I cannot finish my food, and then I cry because I cannot finish my food. Oh, <laughs> yeah, dear. yeah. Because I'll be like, oh, no, I waste the food. You know, I spend money on this food. I cannot eat it. But because I legit couldn't stomach any food, um, and yeah, the emotions were crazy. The hormones were insane. It is normal. Yeah. So as long as you validate it, I mean, you understand that it's normal. You cry it out, and then the next second you'll be happy again yeah. and start eating. <laughs> Yeah. This is how yeah I get my days by. Yeah. Yeah. I oh had really bad three trimester bad morning sickness that I will go to the toilet like ten times a day. Yeah. But nothing comes out, right? I, I do, I do. Oh, Some, really? Most of the times I do. Oh. Mine was nothing. Mm. Mine was mostly like nothing. But I just have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I just have to like gag. Oh so how do you how are you now? Do you still feel nauseous? No. Ah, yeah. that's good, that's good. Yeah. Um, second trimester mm. has a, been a lot more forgiving, a lot more smooth. Um, but the first trimester was definitely hard. I had to go through a lot of emotions, a lot of like ups and downs. Yeah, it's crazy time. Yes, yeah. so I'm glad that second trimester usually mothers are taking it better. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. And then they said the third trimester. Praying for the third one to be yeah. better as well. Huh? Mm, yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't want to be too like optimistic as well because I never thought that my pregnancy would be like that. Um, you know, I don't know why, yeah. but like... Because you're very fit and healthy then, so I perhaps... Know. I don't know. Like, because I never, again, I never visualized myself pregnant, right? I never thought that I would get pregnant. So I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in TCM, usually we advise mothers to take food that's warming, mm. more yang, because of in deficiency. That means the in energy is like like uh, more. We want mm. to counter that with more warming food, such as like fruits wise. You can take cherry, uh, kiwi, and vegetable can be broccoli, spinach, stuff like that to warm up the body. Then you can feel better. Okay. And then we have got a secret recipe that is to warm up the sugar cane and add in some ginger. Ginger also warms the stomach. Oh. Yeah, and with a bit of sugar level, sometimes mothers may feel sick because of low sh blood sugar. Oh. Yeah. Um, so during my first trimester, I mm. drank a lot of ginger tea. Mm. Made a lot of ginger tea because of the nausea. I thought it would help. And the gassiness, I was yeah. really, really gassy, like burping a lot. So I drank so much ginger that I bought from Bentong, like Bentong ginger. It's very, very like very um spicy, very mm. strong mm. Bentong ginger. It's very, very strong. And my house with the smell of ginger. <laughs> and after like I want to say three weeks, I was so sick of ginger that uh, I just too much of yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it gave me relief for a while. You know, mm -hmm. it made me feel warm, like you said, mm. comforting in the stomach. And then after that, it was just too much. Yeah, and, and about the sugar part, mm. um, I have a sweet tooth, like massive sweet mm. tooth. I love to eat cakes and desserts, but during my pregnancy, I could not look at um, cakes. That's so interesting, a sudden yeah. aversion yeah. of the usual yeah. favorite. Yeah. 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 Then what are some of the foods that you usually don't eat, but you enjoy them now? Mm, nothing. Nothing like that, but I would. I really gravitated towards like sour food. Uh, spicy. Oh, oh. oh, I love spicy. Avoid spicy love food. Spi really? Yeah, spicy, stimulating, it <gasps> harms the digestive system. Really? Oh my god, I think <laughs> it's so much spicy food. I love spicy food. In moderation. Yeah. yeah. Oh. From TCM, yeah, yeah we usually yeah. try to ask them to avoid 
chill, and, spicy. And you said like don't drink cold stuff, right? Now I just do whatever I want. So like I always like warm water, warm tea, hot tea, warm water, mm. like warmer stuff. But it, when I got pregnant, I just wanted to like refreshing things. So a lot of yeah. like cold drinks. Your body may feel heaty, you may want yeah. cold drinks to like calm yourself cool it, down, yeah. cool it. You can take coconut water mm. starting from third trimester. Mm. Yeah, avoid cold, chill things and cover up. Mm. Avoid like like showing your belly. Oh. I know it's very stylish. You can carry this off for yeah. sure. <laughs> but okay. in TCM it is to protect your body, warm your body up. Oh. Especially I thought when that you're is pregnant. after birth. After birth is even, even more, more important. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After birth, I don't plan on leaving my house. I'm just going to wrap myself like a mummy at home. <laughs> and just, you know, enjoy my baby. Yeah, yeah. during the confinement yeah. period, right? Yeah. yeah, speaking of after birth, so um, you shared that you'll be back in Malaysia for your confinement. Yeah. So how do you plan for, for this site, your confinement plans? Any? Uh, okay, so as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I got the confinement lady mm. uh, because I know they're very in demand. Apparently it's one of those kind of things, right? So I, I got a few recommendations I, I met a few, actually my parents met a few oh. And they helped me like They told me, okay, yeah, this one looks good So we managed to find one that we like um, So we're getting her for two months Wow! I think that will mm. be very, yeah. very helpful That So that also helps with the ease of mind, you know, like um, I don't think I can prepare for everything But what I can do is probably set up systems to help me along the way and I think this is one of the things that, that will give me that ease of mind um, because I know, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you won't get sleep, you won't get that. I mean, I'm not expecting to sleep very well after the birth of my child but also at the same time, I know that having someone there who has done this for years, you know, this, she's a professional at this, it will definitely help ease the process. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely um, confinement nannies are a good help. Yeah. Yeah, so their experience with baby care, their experience with cooking, yes. confinement meals, I yes. think that dietary aspect is very important for you to heal and recover yes. and eat the correct, right food. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, um, how to take care of yourself. You know, they will t tell you when to shower. Apparently, there are certain ways to shower or certain hours you can shower. I don't know. Um, but I'll probably <laughs> listen to her to what you know she has to say. Um, I also plan on doing like the I, I got like a kakak to come over to the house to do like the binding. Wrapping. Mm -mm. Yeah, so things like that, law massage, mm. postnatal massage. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the cooking, the wrapping, the physical, yeah. and then the breastfeeding part. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's also one important aspect that you have to equip yourself with mm -hmm. good knowledge. So I'm still reading on the breastfeeding part. I don't know, um, I'm not as knowledgeable about it, but I mean, I don't think I can know everything. There's so much yeah, info, so much. so much. Just yesterday I was on my phone and I was reading about colostrum. I was like, what is colostrum? First you know? milk. Mm. Yeah, so apparently you can collect colostrum even before you give birth. Right? So I was texting my other girlfriend who's pregnant actually, Carla, you ah, know Carla? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I was like, so do you have colostrum yet? She's like, yes. I'm like, oh, are you collecting? She's like, nah. I'm like, okay. I mean, everyone is different, you know. She doesn't want to collect it. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. But yeah. Yeah. Um, there is actually no need if there is no medical concerns of you and your baby. Oh, okay. So let Breastfeeding happen naturally. Okay. Collecting colostrum is for mothers who has GD, who's um, going through a difficult birth that they may think that breast milk may came, come in later than expected. Mm. Yeah, it's actually not everyone may have that process happening before birth. Yeah. So after you give birth the of your baby and the placenta are out from your body, then the milk making process will begin. Oh. There is no need if you have got no, no other concern. Really. Yeah. Oh, they said like colostrum is very high in nutrients and like it's really good for your baby. But you have colostrum after you have given birth mm -hmm. and allow your baby to nurse more. So you don't have to collect the colostrum. Like it will just come out with the milk, is it? Um, the first three four days will be all colostrum before the oh, mature milk, yes, yes. transitional milk kicks in. Right. So it comes in sticky form, like honey-like texture. Mm. 
liquid gold, we call it in droplets form. Yes. So it's very hard for you to collect it if you use a pump. Yes. So usually you put your baby to the breast, baby suckle, uh -huh. just that few suckle, she will be collect he will be collecting the colostrum. Okay, mm. okay. So breastfeeding is like around the clock, eight to twelve times a day. That's where mothers will um, not be able to have a full eight hours of rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as baby's stomach is really very small, so each time they will just suckle a bit and it gets easily digestible. Mm -hmm. So they will wake up again at two after two hours and wants to nurse yes, more. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oof. See. We can. I can talk to you about breastfeeding. San Tian San Ye, three days, three nights, <laughs> and all. Yeah, but just I'm here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Even though you're there, you can yes. text me, and okay, I can check you. with you over you. the phone. So you share with me that currently, um, less jobs were offered to you, mm -hmm. and all. It's also good for you to take a take more rest. Yeah. Meanwhile, and plan for your baby's arrival. So how about um, how do you envision like after your confinement? What are your plans in a pipeline? Um, I guess that is also part of my anxieties right now, right? Like the fact that I will not be physically present in Singapore where I have built my career for the past mm. five years and that scares me, it really really scares me because it was very important and it's still very important for me to um, have my own independence financially or even just lifestyle wise, everything uh, apart from my husband, you know, he's very supportive, but I still enjoy my independence. I like the fact that I am my own person. Um, and it's scary to know that I don't know what will happen, you know, after I give birth and after I go through my confinement period, because that's months. And mm. I feel like especially the industry that I'm in, it's a very, very forgetful industry. And, you know, you, everyone is very, very easily replaceable, let's be honest. Um, so yeah, I won't, I don't have anything solid at the moment, um, but what I do foresee is that there will definitely be a shift, you know, mm. just like how as a person, um, my roles have changed as a human being, you know, I've gone from a wife, a daughter, sister to now I'm a mother, you know, and I'm sure uh, that will definitely have an impact on the kind of jobs that I get as well. Yeah, hopefully for the better, I don't know. A wider I'm range, sure maybe maternity line, motherhood, maybe, maybe. hosting, yeah. yeah, sharing of your experience, your journey, hypnobirthing. Yeah, yeah it could yeah, open yeah. many other doors. I hope so, I hope so, yeah. Yeah, there's different seasons in life. So yeah. enjoy the season that you're at now, yeah. enjoy your pregnancy. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm inspired by you about how you shift your mindset so quickly. It's amazing. So perhaps you can share with me like um, what has inspired you recently or what is your inspiration? Where do you derive it from? Um, I think that, you know, uh, I... Everything in life is a journey, you know, like I, it is a never ending self journey. Even before I was pregnant, it was very important for me to uh, constantly discover myself, learn new things about myself, um, relearn things, you know, I, I mean, I learn things and relearn things that don't serve me anymore. Um, so as I enter this, path of motherhood, I want to be a lot more intentional. So there is not one person or one thing that necessarily inspires me, but I mean, there it's the age of social media and the internet, right? So we get so much of this information, so much of this knowledge. And I have been following a lot of like uh, valuable content to me that kind of makes me constantly want to um, carry on my life in a way that's positive and yep. serves me well, mm. you know? Yeah, so I guess that's what inspires me. Yeah. yeah, great, because at different stages in life, you get different inspiration. Yeah, yeah, but your core values are so important, you know, who you are as a core human being. So, I don't know, I still feel like I'm still learning to build that part of myself, yeah. 
Definitely. And with the arrival of a new baby, you will discover more about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I wish you all the best in Thank having you. a smooth pregnancy and a Thank fast you. delivery. Yeah. Thank you. Have the Thank you. childbirth that you envision yourself yes. to be at. Yeah.